Thank you, Miroslav. Dear colleagues, it may be tempting to prematurely announce the death or irrelevance of international organizations, but it's certainly not wise. The OSCE is a case in point. Many thought that the detent of the 90s made the organization unnecessary, but into the 21st century it has proved invaluable. For, for example, in East Ukraine, also after the downing of flight MH17. Establishing truth, achieving justice for the victims of the downing of MH17, and holding the perpetrators accountable will remain a priority for the Netherlands. And in the light of this, we call upon all states to fully cooperate with the investigation into the downing of flight MH17 in, light, in line with Security Council Resolution 2166. If we had abolished the OSCE in the 90s, we would have had to re-establish it later. And yet, to remain useful, firstly, the OSCE must be able to count on the full commitment and cooperation of all participating states. They need to give the organization's goals their full backing, and they need to respect the basic values enshrined in its key documents, such as the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all participating states, the principle of non-violence, and respect for human rights and rule of law. And secondly, it must adapt to the demands of a changing world by putting new challenges on the agenda, such as cyber threats and hybrid war warfare. And existing instruments, like the Vienna document, also need to be brought up to, up to date when necessary. And when disputes arise, for instance on the Open Skies Treaty, to solve them within the framework of this treaty. And ever since the OSCE was founded, the Netherlands has tried to play a constructive role. This year, the Netherlands has worked constructively in the first dimension, for example, as chair of the Structured Dialogue. In a tough geopolitical situation where stalemate seems to be the norm, we have tried to go the extra mile on the difficult issue of conventional arms control. Furthermore, we believe the OSCE's third dimension deserves a central place in the organization, with its focus on human rights and with a special role played by the independent institutions like ODEO. We are putting our money where our mouth is and will contribute more than 7 million euros in support of OSCE and civil society activities in this dimension in 2020 alone. And we push for progress when it comes to the freedom of religion and belief, equal rights of LHBTIQ, and freedom of expression, safety of journalists in particular, and stress the importance of support for human rights defenders and space for civil society. If we were able to set up a forum like the OSC in the darkest days of the Cold War, we should certainly be able to keep it going in this challenging 21st century, for the benefit of us all, and above all, for all our peoples. Thank you, Miros.